Our guest today is Laverne Stewart. She's a journalist, an author, and a mom, and a small business entrepreneur in a way. So welcome to the show. Thank you. It was, um, oh, gee, now we're, we're talking eight years ago yeah. that that happened, but I remember feeling this sense of peace um, and just a, a knowing that, I mean, unless you experience it, it's really hard to put it into words, but it, uh, I felt a sense of peace. Uh, but also an, uh, a sense of urgency. This, uh, this little girl, um, very determined, you know, and, and that's how her, her mother said she knew it was real because I described her daughter. Now, I had never met this child in life, you know. I, I feel like I've come to know her in spirit, um, over all of these years, I, I like to think of her as a, a long distance Facebook friend, you know, just, <laughs> I, I've, we've never met, but I feel like I know her. Yeah. Uh, there, I described her daughter's personality hmm. to her mother. And she said, that's exactly who my daughter was in life. Very determined, you know, had to get her way, had to have the last word. And over the three days before I agreed to contact her mother, this is this little, this, it was like this child, uh, you know, I want, I, you know, can I have, and, you know, and please, and, you know, just, you know, the way children are, they nag until they get what they want. Mm -hmm. uh, well, she was pushing me and pushing me. I had this sense of, if I don't do this thing, I'm never going to get any peace in my life. Like I said, I wasn't sleeping. It was just this feeling of, I've got to call this woman. And then after, after her mother had such a healing experience mm. from the messages she received, then the psychic told me there are many other people who also are hurting, who haven't let go of the pain of this child's death, who need to hear mm. what they need to hear. There's messages that this uh, spirit wants to tell these people. So uh, her teacher, her best friend, police officers on the case, uh, search and rescuers, all of these people were left with this uh, pain uh, and trauma that they could not release. So it started with her teacher, hmm. um, Shirley Dale Easley, lovely lady. She's since passed, but she held on to so much grief and trauma. She had to be the rock for all of the children, all of the parents, other teachers. She, when I met with her, she was in her third uh, bout of cancer, and the cancer had no known origin. And I said to her, do you think that, uh, it, we often hear that emotional trauma l will lead to physical illness. I said, do you think that the your illness is associated with the stress and the trauma of that case? Uh, and the loss of Jackie. And she said, I know it is. Um, and I said, did you ever release the pain? And she said, I never did. I had to put it away. And she said, it's buried deep. And I said, it's time to let it go. So she heard messages and I heard back from her and she said she was at so much peace and she she, along with uh, Jackie's best friend, who struggled all the way through from eight years old until I'm, you know, it, a good 20 years of uh, 15, it was 15 years of um, pain and struggle and, and difficulty in her life and anger. And she's so good now. She's moved on and she's happy with her life and she's in a good relationship and she has a daughter who she named Jackie. Um, police officers who told me they were the lead investigators on the case and they told me um, out of all of the traumatic cases they covered, this one was the one they couldn't let go of. I sat with police officers who um, 
the mention of her name would, you know, bring them to tears and they could not talk. They were just, you could see the trauma and they were shaking. And they said, this is the one that we can't let go of. Hmm. Um, and so they too went and went to the psychics, got the messages they needed to hear. There were two psychics I worked with on this case and uh, on the, on the, getting these uh, these people the messages they needed to hear. Are you okay to mention them, or is it okay to leave it unsaid? Oh well, one um, one was uh, Michelle Russell, uh, and then um, another Suzanne Riley was instrumental. Uh, if it wasn't for Suzanne, um, this probably wouldn't be finished. Um, I'd lost track of Michelle Russell uh, through the process of this and, and Suzanne stepped in and helped out uh, quite a bit to, okay. to get the messages that these people needed to hear. So somewhere in the journey of this young child and all of those around her, the image of a police officer, a male or female, doesn't matter, but there's a certain way or process that they do things to make the next step to go to see a psychic, to find the answers to things and to find some peace to things that they couldn't find in the everyday life. That, did, they need, did they need a nudge? Or was it okay that, that they could go through that threshold and see the world through a, a different well, uh, paradigm? There were, there were three police officers, four four police officers. The first police officer was uh, the officer that uh, was there when her body was discovered. And he had to stay with her remains um, while the other searchers were sent back to the command post to inform everybody that her remains had been found. And um, he, he had struggled with that because he had just come off a major... A case involving child abuse, uh, the Carl Toft case, and he wasn't even supposed to be working. He was supposed to be on vacation, and so he said he had he was there, and uh, he called his his uh, wife at the time and said, "I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how to do this." He was just emotionally destroyed by it, and um, she said, "Just pray," and so he. You know, he said, you know, if you're out there, God, help me. And it was silence. And he took that as, well, I guess he didn't hear me. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he was pretty angry. And he carried that anger uh, for a long time. It, it was affecting him and his career. And uh, in the book, he, he tells about how he was so angry, um, you know, he was doing things that were self-destructive. And then uh, at a company Christmas party, uh, Michelle Russell, the psychic, at that time was working for the Fredericton Police Force uh, in administration uh, as an office administrator or, you know, a, um, an executive assistant. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, she approached him and she said, please don't think I'm crazy, but there's a little girl in spirit around you and she needs you to know some things. And so she just told him all about Jackie and how Jackie's spirit was around him and that he was full of anger and pain and she needed him to know that um, Jackie was uh, in spirit in a really good place that she didn't feel pain when she was killed. She was, her body, her spirit was pulled out of her body before she could feel that physical trauma. And he told me that that changed him. Uh, it turned his life around. He had gone to see a, a priest afterwards and the priest told him that in his whole career, he had only heard one other uh, situation like that. He thought, you know, this is real. And uh, and so it completely turned that officer's life around. And I said, where would you have been if it hadn't been for that? He said, I, I wouldn't be, probably wouldn't be working as a police officer. Uh, I probably would have been fired because he was doing some very self-destructive things. 
you know, if he wasn't working, he said, he told me he was drinking, you know, to try and ease that burden, that pain and that anger. So yeah, he, he was completely changed by the experience. And then I went searching for the other police officers. Uh, one of which I went to his office and um, he had left the force at that time and was working in another field. And I told him, I said, this is going to sound odd to you, but uh, there's a, a child in spirit, I'm told by two psychic mediums who uh, are reaching out to two people who are stuck in a place of grief. You're one of them. And he at first was like, you mean to tell me that the spirit of a dead girl that I investi I've investigated that case is reaching out to me from the other side, from beyond the grave, to send me messages. He said, that's crazy. He said, I don't believe that. That's nonsense. And I said, okay, well, you know what? Here's the psychic's number. I'm leaving it with you. Do what you want. He said, I don't have anything. There's no reason for me to contact her. And he said, do you think that I need to contact her? I said, look at you. I said, you're shaking. You've had to stop three times. You're crying. You got some issues in that. He said, it's the only case that I, I, I can't talk about without getting upset. I said, well, you know, what would it hurt? You know, go see. And if you choose to, great. If not, it's completely up to you. But I think that you have a lot of trauma in your life that you need to release. So I wished him well. I went on my way. Later found out I was only there. I had only left the office about 10 minutes and he picked up the phone and made the call. And he was in the office. He was meeting with the psychic that afternoon. I met him about a year later. Everything about that man had changed. Physically, he looked different. He looked lighter. He was happier. He was smiling. The first time I saw him, he was not smiling, but uh, he said it, it, it did affect him. It changed, it changed his perspective on things and, and he, it allowed him to release a lot of trauma. And another officer I met with, um, he, he didn't have that same level of trauma but it was so good for him to hear that uh, Jackie's spirit was saying thank you thank you for being there for my mother for being so careful uh, and so um, approaching it with such a loving kind uh, gentle manner that people who go through trauma need to be wrapped up in uh, love and tenderness in one of the most horrific times of their lives. So after the police officers, um, what other people um, became part of this new, almost a community um, through the actions and the events and the healing? Oh, um, like I said, search and rescue workers. Um, one, uh, one woman who uh, was also experiencing the trauma from that case. Um, other, uh, other kids who are now ad adults, yeah. but uh, other students in that school, other parents, um, one, one, actually, this is interesting. The the uh, one of the lead homicide investigators, his nephew was with Jackie and Jackie's best friend um, when she was abducted. So what happened is these three children had gone off to play at a frog pond near the school. And Jackie and uh, her best friend Robin, they were having a sleepover at Robin's house. It had been raining all weekend, and she had been there for the weekend, and they were bugging Robin's mother to let them go outside. That, that's back in the day when kids actually liked to go outside and play. Um, so they, they were bugging the, uh, Robin's mother to let them go. 
uh, out and she said, we'll just stay in the yard when it had stopped, ra- finally stopped raining that weekend, just play in the yard. Well, they wanted to get to that frog pond. They loved it there. It was where their teacher, uh, Shirley Dale Easley, took them on nature walks. And they knew there were tadpoles in that pond and they wanted to go collect them. So they snuck off to the frog pond. They weren't supposed to go, but they did. And um, Robin's mother was uh, playing cards uh, on Saturday evening and she got caught up in the card game and then she realized that it was time for the kids to come and inside and get showered and go to bed. And uh, they weren't in the yard. And she had sent her husband out looking for them. And she said, I bet you they've snuck off to that frog pond. I told them not to, but I know that that's where they went. So she sent her husband at the time uh, to go searching. He found Robin uh, and um, Matthew, the the little boy, um, on the way back from the frog pond, but Jackie wasn't with them. And he said, where is Jackie? Well, she already left, they said, and they lied and said she had gone home. They were worried that Jackie was going to get in trouble for getting on an all-terrain vehicle with a man. So Murray Lyons is the man who abducted and murdered Jackie. He showed up on a four-wheeler while they were at the frog pond, and he suggested to them that one of them might like to take a ride with him on the four-wheeler. Well, um, Matthew and Robin um, said no. You know, they had just had that conversation at school about not going with strangers. And Jackie was fascinated by that four-wheeler. She had never been on one. She wanted to go for that ride, and he promised he would bring her right back. So she got on, and she went for a ride. Hmm. And um, so they, it wasn't until late that night that um, Matthew disclosed to his parents that she had gone off on a four-wheeler with a man, with a strange man. Yeah. And the search began. Yeah. So those two children, now being older, did they have a moment with a psychic to Robin, uh, yes, Robin, uh, Jackie's best friend, um, met with uh, one of the psychics about a year after um, her mother and her teacher. It took a while to find her. Yeah. And... Um, it was also, the only word I can come up with was it was a holy moment. Yeah. It was something that you you cannot put into words. Yeah. But it, 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 she also heard things that only she knew about her best friend. And um, it, it just changed her. Uh, I met up with her a while later and she said, I... And thank you for watching. Be good, have fun, love each other. The Dennis Report is an independent media production. To support the program, go to DennisAtchison.com and click Become My Patron on Patreon. Patreon.